welcome, welcome back. back. Yes, you're welcome back. The head of the Nigerian football uh, body reiterated uh, their commitment in clearing the bonuses and allowances of the national team players and coaches. The Nigerian Football Federation President, Amaju Pinnick, said his administration is working to settle the debts they owe Super Eagles players and coaches despite di uh, difficulties caused by the coronavirus pandemic. Pinnick did not shy away from the fi uh, financial challenges facing the NFF and the struggles they encounter in discharging their financial obligations to Nigeria's football teams. Although salaries and allowances of national coaches have been slashed, Coach Ganadraw is being owed five months' salary, with uh, goalkeeper coach Aloy Agu awaiting as high as 22 months on paid wages, while the Super Eagles are yet to receive their bonuses and allowances for 19 months. Um, we've um, been joined this morning by Wale Scott. Uh, we'll be speaking about why the NFF seems to be owing this much, and it's a never-ending conversation on uh, debt to coaches and players. Good morning, Wale. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. You were overwhelmed when you got to Aloy Agu's place, 22 yeah. months. You know, and, and you ask yourself a question. Um, the the Amaji Pinnick is conveniently blaming it on the COVID-19 pandemic. I want to believe, if my memory will do me right right now this morning, that the COVID pandemic had not started in 22 months ago. It had not started, really. So if you are owing Aloy Hago, who is a Nigerian, 22 months salary, you are owing the Super Eagles players 19 months arrears, and then um, you are owing Genot Raw five months, you know? And um, I think it's all wrong. I think um, we, we go to church too much in this country, we go to the mosques too much in this country, and we believe in miracles. You don't want to pay them money, but you want them to win laurels. How do you do that? You don't pay someone, you, you, you don't pay someone, you expect a miracle from that person. It doesn't work like that. I have been unfortunately um, acclimatized, let me use that word, with um, our Paralympians at the National Stadium. And these guys don't use any supplements use um, really bad structures to actually train and they still go up. After they want to, after they train, they, go, they eat and actually they eat um, rice, yam and beans and fish and sachet water. They walk from National Stadium to Barracks Bus Stop, which is a, a, a mile away. And they still go to the Paralympics and they still win gold. So let me, let me understand, let's quickly also look at the COVID-19 um, excuse. Um, how much did that really affect the earnings of the NFF? Were we making that much money from stadiums? That question, Osaregi, is going to make me blow cover. I'm going to actually blow cover. Because the truth be said, FIFA, honestly, sent some money to us as palliatives for national teams and, women. Uh, and professional teams and women. And CAF also sent palliatives. I have been a, a, a sports journalist for a while. And I have not heard any team, any woman, um, anybody say we have received palliatives for COVID from FIFA or from CAF yet. But we know the palliatives have been paid. Hmm. Hmm. And even before COVID, I mean, as far back as the year 2013, Nigerian coach Stephen Keshi was owed five months' salary. So, really, then, does this COVID excuse hold any water? No, it doesn't. We have always been owing money way before COVID, way before. The millennium is, is, is our norm to owe money, you know. And these guys receive these monies and they do not pay. Um, I know a coach who died, um, who got his both legs cut because of diabetes or something. And um, his wife is still going to Abuja till today, even during COVID. She's Ghanaian. I won't call the man's name, but some people know their name, his name right now. Still goes to Abuja to go and look for how to get that money till now. So I think it's a norm in Nigeria for our leaders to do this to us. And that's why you see our Super Eagles players who actually were born in Nigeria, who were groomed in Nigeria, say, I won't die for Nigeria. The only ones who put their heart and soul into the game when they are playing for Nigeria are the ones who actually grew abroad, who were actually born abroad, not the ones who grew up here. Who should be fired for failure to pay salaries for 22 months or four? You're still putting me on the boner again. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it has to be boner. somebody. There's a minister for youth and sports, no doubt. Um, the minister of youth and sports came in president. recently. And he came in ground running. You know, he has said somebody will be fired. People will be actually giving memos and all that for things that are not done right. But we have an Amaju Pinnick, who is the NFF president, 
who has shown his body language has shown to the world that he doesn't care what we think. And it's, it tells us to our face indirectly that you can do me nothing. Our under-23 team were playing a match, a semi-final match in Guinea-Bissau. And our NFF president was in London watching the Chelsea against Arsenal match with Sunday Ulisse. And after they watched that match, they went to the hotel room and he signed Sunday Ulisse to be the new coach of the Super Eagles without consulting any of the board members. And brought Ulisse home and said, Allah, I've brought the new coach of the Super Eagles. And so I think somebody should be punished. Should he be a Majipinic? Maybe. Uh, but I, I don't know. I think um, the Amaji should understand that he's actually the head of um, a public service unit and that he's serving the public and he should um, align with us when he wants to make decisions and wants to do things. Amaji should tell the world where the FIFA palliatives is. Amaji should tell the world where the CAF palliatives is. I'm just to explain to us why these guys well, have not been paid. Well, we should be able to pay our coaches regardless of uh, FIFA and CAF palliatives. Exactly. So, yes. so, so let's let's leave that out of the picture. Um, yes, it's great that you know if those things actually did come. Great, and there should be questions, or there should be questions about what they, they are palliatives. For. That's what they are but, called. But, Extras. But we should still you know? pay our coaches regardless of those yes. palliatives. So, what I, what I what I'm trying to you know get is how much do we really earn from sports? Um, during, I mean, without a pandemic, do we earn that much money from ticket sales, from endorsements, from anything? If you're talking about sports, then we're actually talking about our national team coaches. I know for one that in any FIFA organized competition, mm -hmm. in any CAF organized competition, when you qualify to every stage, you get a lot of money. And then um, so far, so good. In the last five editions of CAF organized, that's Nations Cup, We've qualified into the next round, and we've made good money. In FIFA organized events, I think for the first time in a long time, we qualified for um, into the next stage, so we got some money too. So yes, we do make money off these people. And don't forget that um, um, the Super Eagles, love it or leave it, as long as Africa is concerned, if there's a organized event by FIFA or any football body, and Nigeria is involved, the whole of Africa, the whole of the Western world are looking at us because Nigeria is the football center. All Africa right, so maybe. I have two more questions to ask you. First of all, legendary football player Julius Sagao, he was asked about coaching, his ambition to coach, and he said that he would not be a coach simply because of the poor payment of you know, coaches. How would you say this, this phenomenon basically you know, discourages people from venturing into the profession and to give you know off their their experience to other younger players this morning it makes me it makes me feel bad as a nigerian it makes me sad that i'm a nigerian today because don't forget let's go back to that story again general is being owed salary arrears for five months the players have been owed salary arrears for 19 months aloy agu who i know personally who is the goalkeeper trainer who is not doing very well financially as we speak, is being owed 22 months. Who does that? Uh, you know, it, it, it's sad that we don't treat ourselves right. I agree with any former Nigerian footballer who says, I don't want to get involved in Nigerian football. We saw it, Thomas Derneby, who is a foreigner, an expatriate, who was the coach of the female football team. He ran away, he went our and he said he didn't like the way things were being run in Nigeria. He was being owed money. He said ministers were calling him and saying he must put my girl in the team. Yes, and that's the way he runs. And he used to be like that until General came. And I think to a large extent, that's why General Roy has been vindicated to a large extent. Roy is not agreeing for these ministers. They will always call the coach and say, listen, put my boy. Whether it's good or bad, put my boy. So we end up bringing out a second 11 Super Eagles at the end of the day are not the best that we actually have. Exactly. You know, yeah. it's, it's really sad. The, the poor welfare affects the psyche of the coach, of the players, and we can't Mikael, exactly Mikael expect Mikael them will be to... as consistently said when he was in Chelsea that, listen, I will not, if I have a serious match, if Chelsea has a match against an Arsenal, mm -hmm. a Manchester United, a big match, you will see Mourinho will send a message to the, our NFL and say, listen, he's injured. That's a match for Wednesday. Is injured. And then Mikel plays on Saturday. And you're asking yourself. And then they asked Mikel, and Mikel was forced to just announce the guys, I'm not going to die for Nigeria. It's not worth wow. dying for. Sad. Really, it's not. All right. Um, we wish um, 
Amanju Pinnick, well, uh, same with Gerard Raw, Aloy Agu. Um, we hope that they get their remuneration. No, now, as now, 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 thanks to um, um, the guys who brought the story out, thanks to me, thanks to Osarogi, thanks to Anita, thanks to every other broadcast journalist who is talking about it this morning. Now, I'm sure they will. Maybe not all, no. I don't, I don't expect Aloy to get um, all 22, 22 months. months. No, I don't no. think so. We'll, we'll but <laughs> but we, we, we wish that, um, all of them well. And. Um, that's all we have for you this morning. Um, congratulations to Manchester United yesterday, mm. trashing mm. Um, was it Southampton. Humiliating. Uh, humiliating. Humiliating nine yeah. goals to nil. <laughs> Embarrassing, but beautiful to watch. Um, and um, if you missed out on any of the greatness that happened this morning, you can catch up on social media at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Same thing with our YouTube channel at uh, Plus TV Africa also. Yes, thank you very much for keeping it a day with us here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's February 3rd, 2021, and it's bye from all of us.